Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little. I'm here with episode 254 of Weekly Poker Hand, and uh, we have a, a heck of a hand for you today. This is from 510 No Limit at Stone's Gambling Hall. Remember, this is a gambling hall. People come here to gamble. I know this hand's about to be pretty ridiculous, but understand that this is how some people play. It's not the ideal word, way to play most of the time, but it is, is how some people play. So we have Rich. I don't know anything about Rich. He likes to limp from under the gun plus two with ace nine offsuit, which... I would definitely say you'd much prefer to raise or fold, and you should probably just fold the ace line offsuit unless your opponents are lunatics. Anyway, he limps. Harlan decides to limp behind with 10-2 suited, which is completely unnecessary. Gets around to Apostle, who, from what I understand, people think he plays relatively loose, relatively aggressive, and probably likes to bluff too much. So that is probably accurate. Again, I've never, never played with him, so I don't know. The graphics are about to be a little bit wrong, but that's okay. I'll tell you what's happening. It gets back around to Rich, this player here, who limp re-raises. So he put in $10 initially, then he made it... Well, let's wait for the internet. There we go. He made it 180 So he limp re-raised the ace-9 offsuit. I mean, I guess if you're going to limp the ace-9 offsuit, you might as well turn it into a bluff, pretend like it's aces. But... It's like, why, right? A lot of people think they're supposed to be in there battling and splashing and fighting, and you just don't have to be. Then again, we are at the gambling hall, so let's gamble. Once Apostle is in this situation now where stacks are 3,000 deep, it's probably okay to put in 120 more in position with Ace-3 suited. If you do get a very favorable flop, you stand to stack your opponent, because at this point you either think Rich has a, a very strong nut hand, which you know, will lose to a flush, or just uh, an insane bluff where, you know, if he is bluffing, he's probably going to get to bluff you. But in this scenario, very often you do want to call in position with ace-3 suited. Even though it is a limp and then re-raise. Um, whenever you have an ace, you block pocket aces, so that's useful. Normally, your, or sometimes your ace will be good, and if you get a flush, that's clearly great. All right, flop comes. We are heads up, by the way. Flop comes jack-4-2, no clubs for apostle. Rich has ace-high. And now... Rich decides to make a continuation bet, which I think is fine. This is a pretty standard spot to make a small bet with your whole range. Pot's 390. It looks like he's going to go to 20. I don't think you even need to go this big. I think it's fine to even go small here. You are going to get floated a lot, which is fine. But realize, in this scenario, he's essentially saying, I have aces or kings or queens or jacks, and I am going to bet. So it looks like he bet 220, and Apostle decided to call with his gut shot straight draw, which I also think is fine. So... I have no problem with this on the flop. Whenever you do bet small, understand your opponents will call you a lot. Why? Because they're getting good pot odds, right? When you give someone good pot odds, don't expect them to fold unless they're weak and tight. And I already told you all, Apostle's not tight. So he floats, which is fine. Turn is a four of spades. So now, this is a card that should still heavily favor Rich's range, assuming Rich's range is quite strong. So think about it. If Rich has aces, kings, queens, jacks, or ace, king, the four is very unlikely to have hurt those hands. I mean, the only hand that Apostle realistically should have that just improved on the four would be ace four suited or five four suited. Maybe four three suited, but probably not. So the four is pretty much a blank. Um, that said, if you are sitting here with aces in Rich's shoes, you should at least consider checking if you think Apostle will take a stab at the flop with all of his missed hands. And if he is going to float the flop with a lot of stuff, like just backdoor gut shots and backdoor flush draws and whatnot, then he will be taking a stab at a lot of turns. So I don't think checking's bad, especially as an exploit if your opponent's loose. But with ace-9 offsuit, well, you do beat some of those hands. But at the same time, say he floated with ace-queen suited, he may decide to bluff. Or say he has pocket fives, he may decide to bet small for protection, right? So when you are bluffing, especially if you should not have very many bluffs in your range... It's usually ideal to just keep betting with whatever obvious bluffs you have. So I probably would have just keep betting here. I know it looks aggressive, but I think it'd probably be just fine. So here is Apostle thinking it over. Should he bluff with his hand? Well, it is one of the worst hands he can have, right? He loses to Rich's value range and even to some of the bluffs like, well, ace line offsuit. And he has a gut shot if he gets called. So I like the idea of betting the turn. He bets 330, or three, sorry, 365. Which, you know, I think that's a fine bet size. Not too big. This is what you would want to do if you did have a premium hand or a hand you're betting for value slash protection. Now it's back on Rich. 
So now you want to ask, how would I play aces? Well, you would clearly just call, right? You would definitely not want to raise and, and make future hands not bluff you on the turn. Um, how would you play pocket jacks? Same story if you raise, so you're going to have a hard time getting called by much besides an overpair or maybe a hero call. But we have ace high out of position. So there are these spots in live poker where you can kind of just look and tell your opponent doesn't like his hand. Now, I don't do a whole lot of plays where I'm just making rather insane bluffs. An ace-line offsuit here is a pretty insane bluff. Rich does decide to make the insane bluff, though. So remember, Apostle bet 365, and now Rich check raises to what appears to be 800. A relatively small check raise. Now Apostle has a pretty clear fold. So yeah, he did make it 830. So there's a very small raise. There's only 400 more into what will be a 2400 pot if Apostle calls, but I don't think that matters. In this scenario, Apostle could just be dead. He could also, um, if he does hit his draw, there's a chance he doesn't even get paid. Like say Rich is bluffing and he decides to bet the river and then Apostle shoves, Rich may fold out, right? Say he's sitting here like king, queen, or 10, nine of spades, he may give up on the river. So there's no guarantee you'll even get paid if you get there. It's tough to say what exactly is going to happen because this is a pretty insane spot. Anyway, Apostle does decide to call. I think both these players are in this pot way longer than they should have been. In this scenario, both players have pretty clear marginal made hands that don't really need to bluff. But to be fair, once the pot gets gigantic, they should start bluffing because this is obviously a pretty bad hand in their range. All right. River is a six of hearts, which is also pretty much a blank. Now does Rich bluff? Well, I mean... This is one of these spots where it's pretty hard to come up with very many obvious bluffs for Rich. So I guess if we somehow find ourselves here, we should bluff. Pot's 2,500 already, and stacks are only 2,400 remaining. So you should definitely bet something. The question is how much. Well, given Apostle could just have an overpair or pocket jacks, I don't think you want to jam. Because if you jam, he's just going to have pretty easy decisions. So if you were betting with aces or kings or queens, you want to bet an amount that a jack will almost certainly call. And I think in this scenario... 1300, 1400 is pretty nice. He does go 1000 though, and I guess this is fine, but I feel like if you did have aces, you definitely want to extract more value. Um, Apostle clearly has an easy fold, but instead he decides to go all in. So these players are now playing what um, looks like it's going to be, I don't even know, $7,500 pot if all the money goes all in. Um, obviously, Rich has an easy fold at this point. He beats literally nothing. Literally nothing. <laughs> That's not actually true. So he does beat ace five of spades, ace three of spades. Those are hands that may want to play this way, right? They would certainly bet the turn. They would certainly call a turn raise. He does beat king queen of spades. He does beat queen ten of spades. He loses the six five of spades, which may decide to bluff. He loses the ace six of spades, which may decide to bluff. And um, he loses. He, he does beat a lot of just insane bluffs. The problem though is you also lose to some made hands that will get turned into a bluff. Like maybe pocket threes turns itself into a bluff. Or so maybe pocket fives decides to bluff. Or maybe um, ace jack or ace queen decides to bluff. So this is one of these rough spots where you obviously lose to all value hands, but you also lose to all, or you lose to some bluffs. So in these scenarios, usually you just need to fold. That said, he does have to put in 1,500 to win 7,500. So he needs to be good here 20% um, of the time. And... This is one of these spots where against a normal human, this is just the easiest fold in the world. But against someone who is an absolute maniac, who will float you super wide, who will jam super wide, et cetera, et cetera, this is a spot where calling becomes viable because when Postle raises the river, he's probably not raising ace-jack or king-jack or pocket-queens, right? Just because it's so easy for Rich to have aces or kings at this point. So when he's raising, he should be very polarized, but like, would 6-5 actually raise the river? I don't know. This is one of these spots that's hard to analyze because I just don't know how insane these players are. If they're actually ludicrous and not going for really thin value with their river raises, I don't actually think this is an insane spot to call given the pot odds, given the reads, etc. The more crazy Apostle thinks Rich is, the more likely he should be to run a river bluff because, I mean, who's going to really call here with ace high, right? <laughs> um, so that's, that's all I really have to say. After a while, we're going to fast forward here. Rich gives it a bit of thought. He gives it more thought. He gives it more thought. He gives it about five minutes of thought. After a while, he does eventually make the call. With ace-nine, he loses to almost everything. 
except for one of the few hands Apostle has. And he wins a nice pot. Now, a lot of people look at this and they say, wow, what a great play, that was amazing. I should be making plays like this in my day-to-day -day poker play. But you really should not at all. Because in this scenario, he had to be against an opponent who is capable of calling the 3-bet preflop with a hand worse than Ace-9, which a lot of people won't. Someone who has to float the flop with a gut shot, which you know most people will, but some people won't. Someone who will bet the turn when you check to them and then call a raise with it. And then will bluff raise the river. That's a whole lot of hoops to jump through. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm just trying to think back to my day-to-day -day poker play, and I don't know many people who are doing things like that. Seems pretty insane. So... Anyway, he makes the call, he wins the pot, and I'm sure he's going to continue making these plays in the future. But this was completely unnecessary. By, by both players, really. And it's kind of fun to see Apostle show up with one of the bluffs that probably should not be in his range. Because when he shows up with this ace-3 of clubs, it means he probably does this with ace-5 of clubs, with ace-7 of clubs, with um, ace-5 of heart, or ace-5 of hearts, ace-3 of hearts, etc., etc. Like, more bluffs than you would naturally think. And as there are more and more bluffs in his range then hero calling makes a lot more sense, especially if you know Apostle's river raising range is hands worse than ace-9 and not hands like ace-queen that may have just decided to hero call themselves. So pretty neat spot, certainly something you don't see on a regular basis. That's a wild hand. If you get to play with players like this, instead of trying to make big hero calls with stuff like ace-9, just come prepared with very good cards. That makes life way easier. I do understand you may want to get in there and battle and splash around and fight, but it's just not necessary. Certainly need to give a little bit of action to get a give action, but you don't need to be making all-in calls for however many big blinds this was. It's a lot of them with a sign. So that's going to be it for today. Hope you enjoyed this hand. If you did, please click like, please click subscribe. Have fun, be nice to someone, and I will see you next week.